What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So I'm here to deliver as promised. We're making this little church from one of our stained glass books. So if you guys saw my last video, I told you we would be making the little country church from the 40 great stained glass projects book that you can find right on Amazon. Of course, I'll have this and everything else used in today's video linked down below. So yeah, this is a little country church. I have to say, I absolutely love how it turned out in using different color bulbs inside of it. It just looks so cool. I did make a couple small changes and you guys will see that here in a second. So yeah, we've got a lot to get through. Let's just get started. Okay, so just jumping right into it. Again, you guys, we're in our 40 Great Stained Glass Projects book right from Amazon. I'll have it linked below. And opening right up, our little country church starts on page 122, and they just jump right into soldering all of these pieces together. So because we're kind of halfway through the book now, they don't go over cutting, grinding, cleaning, wrapping, any of that. They just start right at soldering all these pieces together. So that's what I'm going to do as well. If you're new here, if you're new to stained glass, and you have any specific questions on any specific step in stained glass. I have dedicated videos to everything on my channel. I'll also have my stained glass playlist linked below. But for today's project, we're going to start right where they start. I've already got my pieces cut, ground, wrapped, and ready to go. So before I show you everything that I've got ready, let's talk about the little changes that I did make. So looking at the little country church, they've got this little ledge at the front here. I think that's just like a awning type thing. I don't really like the way that that looks. And I also don't like the diamonds on the front and the back of the church. So when you print out or copy your pattern, Patterns. These are the little diamonds. I do not like those. They're not centered. They're not my favorite. I did something else in that spot, which I'll show you in a second. So I just X out those and I'm just going to leave those solid. And again, that little awning are these two pieces right here. So I x over those. I'm not going to cut those out either. So of course, you guys can do exactly what they did if you like. I just wanted to show you the changes that I made before we even get started. One other thing, when we're kind of putting this piece together a little bit further down, after they've already wrapped their pieces, they grind a hole out for the plug to sit through behind it. I did that first. So I don't want to wrap all of my glass in foil and then grind over the foil. I'd rather wrap it all and make it completely look finished back there if that makes sense so on this back piece right here our little back church piece this is where you drill the hole I did that before I wrapped everything in foil so I could wrap that little section in foil as well and make it look nice and finished that's all the changes I made let me grab all of my glass that's ready to go and we'll pick up right where they're starting okay so before we get started I just wanted to kind of show you guys all the glass that I have cut out here everything is ready to go so just a couple things number one when I cut out every everything, the sides of the houses, the front, the roof, I cut out everything together, if that makes sense. So if you guys aren't new here, you probably know what I'm talking about. For an example, when I cut out this section of roof, I put the entire stencil down on the glass and traced it together, then traced my lines in between, and then the actual individual shingle pieces. So when I cut it out, I cut the top, cut the center lines, then cut the wavy lines in between. That way, when we put it back together, not only does it fit perfectly back together, but it makes sense as far as the patterning on the glass, the iridescent on the glass. It just works much better that way. So that's how I do it. Again, because I cut glass the way I do, that allows me to cut glass out this specific way. So beyond that, like I mentioned earlier, I do not like this little shelf that they have in front of the church, and I don't like the offset diamonds they have on the front and the back as well. So this is what I did instead. I just quickly freehanded some black enamel crosses onto the front and back of our church. I'm going to do a dedicated video on painting glass with enamel paints. So I quickly freehanded that, let it sit, and then cured it in the oven. So now we're ready to go. So the very first thing that it wants us to do is to start soldering the components together. So we're going to be using layout strips and we're going to solder the front, back, and two sides of the church. Solder the four window sides of the steeple and the two sections of the roof. So I'm going to get all of these pieces out of the way and we're going to solder the front, back, and two sides of our church first. Okay guys, so pretty much using all of the same products here as normal. I've got my favorite Novacan Liquid Flux. I'm using Canfield 6040 solder today. I've got my tip tinner and chemical paste right here. I've got my Hakko iron heating up. And because we're using add-ons today, I'm just going to be soldering everything right on my workbench. So because again, I'm using add-ons, I'm just going to tack solder everything together, sturdy in place, do the next piece, and then go back in and fully solder them and tin them.
Okay, so we've got all of our pieces soldered together except for the very tippity top of the steeple. So now we've just got to make a square here and put our steeple together and then we can start assembling our church. So like I said, I'm just going to make a little quick square down here and put our steeple together. Okay, so we've got our steeple nice and straight. So now we're going to bead solder the outside of it and then just tin, lightly tin the bottom and the inside of our steeple. Okay guys, now comes the fun part. So we've got all of our pieces soldered together and flipping over to the next page, it says building the church. Using a squaring device, set the front and one side at a 90 degree angle and tack solder the top and bottom. Remember to line up the inside edges. Then it says add the second side to the front and tack solder. Before attaching the back, you need to grind a small opening that will allow the electrical cord to pass through. A one quarter inch grinding bit is necessary. We've already done that, so we can skip those next few steps and go right to attaching the back. I don't have a scoring device exactly like they show in the book, but I probably should just build one. Maybe I'll make a video on making different types of rigs or scoring devices for stained glass. So let me know if you guys want to see that. But meantime, we're just going to use our little mini add-ons that we've got right here. We should be able to line it up just fine using these. I'm going to sweep my little area right here that I'm working with just so everything sits nice and flat. And I'm going to do the same thing. Set these up at a 90 degree angle so we can use this to start soldering our house together. Okay, so we're going to take the front of our house first and grab one of our sides. Side's gonna go here, front's gonna go here, and we're butting the inside edges up against each other. And we're just going to tack solder those in place. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. I am lining up the inside edges just like that. All right, that is the hardest part. We've got our frame stuck together this thing is starting to look like something. Okay, so I'm going to move these little add-ons out of the way here so we can look at our next step. Okay, so we've put all of our little pieces together. It says bead solder all seams and tin any exposed copper. So it wants us to do that before we put the roof on. So we are just going to bead solder all of our edges and then tin any exposed copper, which we shouldn't really have any anyways. So we're just gonna bead all of the seams that we just created. Still being pretty gentle because this thing is just loosely together with those tacks. Okay, so our main frame is pretty much set and we've already tinned all the edges so we don't have any extra tinning to go in and to do. Okay, so we've attached the back, bead sealed are all seams and tinning exposed copper. Yep, lay the roof sections on the front and back eaves and align with the inside edges even along the seam. Tack solder at the front and the back. Then remove the roof and use braces to bead solder it on both sides. Be careful to keep the angle from changing. Okay, so we're gonna need something to hold that angle nice. Well, I guess we can just, we'll tack solder the hell out of it. So we've got to figure out how we're gonna hold our roof pieces in place like this and tack solder at the same time. I'm gonna grab a few things, just random things in my office to try to hold these in place. Okay guys, so I grabbed two just standard mugs. These are actually sublimation mugs and hopefully these are gonna help hold our little roof pieces in place. Yes! All right, I'm just gonna try to pinch hold these with my hands. So let me hit it with some flux first, then we'll sit it in the right spot and try to quickly solder them in place. Okay, all right, now we're gonna tack solder the ever-living heck out of the top and bottom of this. Now we've gotta be real careful and flip this thing over without letting it bend and bead solder the inside and outside. It feels pretty strong now though. I feel like I should just bead solder it on top right now. I feel like that would make more sense and then we'll go in and solder the inside because it's only a tiny seam connecting on the inside. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this thing over and solder that inside seam. Okay, that is feeling pretty solid. So we're going to put the roof essentially back on the house, flip it upside down and solder it firmly in place everywhere we can. Solder the two components together at the top of the eaves and at the three points where the roof touches the top of the church. Assemble the three pieces that make up the porch roof. Solder it in place. So if you guys did the porch roof, you would do it after you completely solder the roof. We didn't do that, so we can skip that part. We're gonna flip it over and solder it completely in place. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna drop a couple beads inside here. I'm just gonna drop a couple larger beads up where the frame of the house meets the roof on these inside corners and on the inside top where the point meets the roof as well, just for some added strength. All right, guys, we are cruising right along here. This roof feels nice and secure. The entire piece feels nice and secure. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, it's already looking pretty cute and we still have so much detail to do on the windows and steeple. Okay, so it's looking like our next step. We are using a squaring device again and assembling the four lower sides of the steeple and bead soldering the seams and tinning the copper edges. Then we're going to tack solder the steeple top to the windows and bead and solder the seams. Clean the steeple thoroughly as well as the area on the church where it will fit because we're not going to be able to clean that once we attach it together. So same thing here guys we're just going to be using our little makeshift squaring device and tacking these pieces in place. Okay, we've got our little steeple put together. Now we've got to attach it to our church. So we've got our piece. Oh, shit. we didn't clean the inside of it. Son of a. We have to remove these tacks and clean this. Come on, come on. So close. There it is. Woohoo! We didn't destroy anything. We have to clean this section of the roof and we've got to really clean the inside of this steeple. But because we have to do that, I might as well just clean the whole thing really quick. So I'm just going to sweep this off to get all of these little solder beads off of the surface. Then I'm going to take it to my art sink and give everything a really nice, good scrub with warm soapy water and a soft bristle brush. Okay guys, everything is nice and clean and I completely dry everything as well. Where were we? We've got to put the steeple back on, centering it on this first seam. This is the front of my church right here and we're going to tack solder it in place. Okay, sorry guys, camera battery died, but got our steeple on. It is looking pretty damn cool. I am so excited. Look at that. I cannot wait to see this thing lit up and patinaed. Spoiler alert, I'm sure you guys already knew though, we would be patining this thing black, absolutely. But now for the fun part, putting all the details on the windows. So I've already done the door. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do a thinner or thicker gauge wire. And after looking at this for a second, I think once we patina it, I'm going to absolutely love it. Working with a thin, thin wire like this is super tricky, so I'm just gonna have to be careful. I've got a few pieces cut here already, and I'm just going to decorate all the windows. So the door, I'm going to leave with just one slice down the middle right there. And for each window, I'm just going to do a simple cross going horizontally and then vertically across every window. Guys, I could literally scream with how cute this is coming out. Stop it right now. I'm not going to scream because it's midnight and all three of my dogs are sleeping, but I want to. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. I friggin' love it and I can't wait to see it lit up. Anyways, we have finished all of the wire detailing, so... The next step would be installing the light fixture, but they say that you have to clean the entire thing first, obviously, because you can't clean it after you install the light fixture, but I'm going to patina my piece. So I'm going to give it a nice, good, warm, soapy, scrubby bath, patina it, give it another scrubby bath, and then we'll install our little lamp. But it's midnight, so I might just wash it, patina it, see what it looks like, and then we'll pick back up tomorrow. Two seconds for you guys anyway. Guys, I gotta tell ya, this thing isn't even done yet, and I'm struggling real hard with the idea of selling this thing. God, how do I sell this? This is so friggin' cool. All right, it is midnight though, you guys. So as much as I do not want to, I've got to put this thing down just for tonight. And we'll finish it first thing in the morning by putting those brackets in and lighting it up. 
Good morning. We're at the final step now, the most important part, and that's going to be putting in our little light accessory cord. So you're gonna need an eighth inch brass rod. As you can see, I've already cut mine. How it wants us to put them in is directly in the center of our two windows going across from sidewall to sidewall. Because it's kind of holding itself in place, I think I might be able to do this one-handed. Let's try it. All right, I think that is pretty well soldered in place on both sides. So here is our little accessory cord. And as you can see, it's got this metal clip on the side. And these notches are what's going to hold on to the brass rods that we just soldered in. One side will sit in this brass rod on those little notches, just like that. And then the other brass rod, we're gonna have to hold in place and sit it inside the other notches. All right, hopefully you guys can see that okay. I'm afraid to let go. Now that clip will be secured in place once we solder our second brass rod in. And I'm gonna do that right now before anything moves. I'm just gonna hit each side with flux again and solder that right down in place next to our other brass rod. Make sure you've got your cord facing the correct way. You want your wire to sit right inside that notch so it sits flat on the table or surface that you're going to set it on. All right, you guys, that is it. Our light fixture is secured in place, nice and snug that light clip isn't going to go anywhere. I'm just going to wipe this area up with a paper towel since we can no longer rinse it since we have our light fixture in there. Oh, I wanna smash it, it's so cute. Let's get this cleaned up and we'll take a look at our final reveal. Alrighty guys, here is our finished church and as you guys have already heard me say quite a few times, I absolutely love how this thing turned out. I'm going to be so, so sad to see it go. But this video has already been long enough, so I'm going to let you guys go. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you did, comment down below and let me know what do you want to see next and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!